Number 77. For which of the following substances is the least energy required to convert one mole of the solid into separate ions? And then we have a multiple choice. We've got five options. We have to pick the correct one. So which one has the least energy? MgO, SRO, KF, CSF, and MgF2. All right. So the first thing is, is basically just identify what are they talking about? What type of energy? Now I look over here and all of these are ionic compounds, right? For all of them, we have a metal in the front and we have a non-metal in the back, whether it's oxygen or fluorine. And then you got magnesium, strontium, potassium, cesium, and then magnesium again. So we're dealing with ionic compounds. That's the solid, one mole of the solid. We have, you know, an ionic compound. And we want to separate them into its ions. Whenever you're trying to pull away a ionic compound and turn it into its ions, that's the lattice energy. So a lattice energy is generally when you have an ionic compound, that's a solid, and you, you basically break that ionic bond. You break the attraction, and now you just have your X and your Y. These will be your charges. That's the ions. The ions are the charged particles, and you got these in your gas state. So right off the bat, we're dealing with lattice energies. So we're trying to find the least amount of energy, specifically the least lattice energy, the energy that is required to break the ionic bond. So um, the thing that we should do is to just write out each one's equation. And then from there, we can kind of figure out which one's going to be the least, which one's going to be the most, and then we can kind of, you know, uh, get down to the answer. So MgO, that's going to be a solid. That's the ionic compound. We got SRO. We got KF. CSF. And let me just pull this. There we go. And then last but not least, we got MgF2. Okay, now all of these, since we're dealing with lattice energy, all of these are going to break its ionic bond between the two atoms, right? The metal and the nonmetal. So we're just going to run right through it. So this would be Mg plus O. We'll do the charges in a little bit. We got strontium plus oxygen. We got potassium plus oxygen, just kidding, <laughs> fluorine. We got cesium plus fluorine, and then we got magnesium plus fluorine. Now, let's just do the charges. This is where we got to look on the periodic table. So magnesium is in group two, that's a plus two charge. Strontium is also in group two, that's a plus two. Potassium is in group one, that's a plus one. Cesium is in group one, that's a plus one, and magnesium is a plus two. Oxygen is in group 6A or 16, that's the negative two. Negative two, and your fluorines, those are halogen group, halogens are negative one. Okay, and then we'll just put, you know, just to finish it out, this is gas, gas, and gas, and just make sure that these equations are balanced. Now there's only one of them that we really have to balance, and that's the last one. Mainly because you have two fluorines, so I have to put a two in front of here. But everybody else looks balanced to me. So now, I'm just gonna put this in the middle. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's talk about what will dictate uh, a lattice energy to increase and a lattice energy to decrease in amount. Now, remember, when we're talking about energy, right, any type of energy, right, if you have high amounts of energy, that means that there's, you know, quite a resistance there. High amounts of energy means that something is hard to do. And in terms of lattice energy, 
you're basically going to be breaking it down into two things. There's two important properties in which uh, a molecule will have a high lattice energy. And the first thing is, is that if you have a greater charge, this will increase the energy. So with more charge comes more energy. This is just because the amount of electrons that are being transferred gives a greater attraction and it's harder to break up that bond. So we still want the lowest amount of energy. So we don't want big charges. We want the smaller ones. So right off the bat, I see that magnesium is a plus two. We got negative twos, right? I would just look at your charge of the metal because that's really what's going to make a difference. So in terms of low energy, we want the low charge and, you know, so spe specifically you can look at the metal. So plus two, plus two, plus one, plus one, plus two. We could automatically eliminate MgO because we don't want a high charge. We want low energy. The more charge on that metal, the more energy. So right off the bat, we get rid of all the plus twos. A, B, and E are down. Now, you got a 50-50 shot. The next part that influences whether a lattice energy will be high or low is the atomic radius. Now, just know that the lower the atomic radius, that means that they're closer together, right? They're getting smaller. And if you are closer together, if you form in a tight bond and you're super, super close, it's going to take a lot of energy to break up that bond. So the smaller the radius, the higher the energy. And then on the flip side, if you have really, really big atoms, then that's the lower side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little chart here for atomic radius. And then we just have to use that trend to find out what's going on with cesium and potassium because they both have fluorine. So that doesn't matter. We're looking at just the cesium and the potassium. So on the periodic table, potassium is in group one, but cesium is below it. Remember, as you go down the periodic table, the atomic radius will increase. So that means potassium is a little dot and calcium, calcium, <laughs> cesium is way larger. And remember, the greater the energy, uh, sorry, the greater the radius, the lower the amount of energy. We want the least amount of energy. Cesium is bigger than potassium. That one's smaller. So the smaller the radius, the higher the energy. The bigger the radius, the lower the energy. We wanted the least, so you got it. It's cesium fluoride, CSF, because the cesium has the plus one charge and it's bigger. And that's it. What'd you think? Love multiple choice. You could always reason it out, especially for the theory ones. I hope uh, this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this channel. Thank you so much for all your support and for being part of the community. I hope you're doing well out there. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.